Hello everybody, my name is James Davies, and welcome to a new season and a new episode of Photo Chat Vlog. Still blowing around the internet like an old leaf after all these years, but whatever. You can see here a Polaroid image system camera, otherwise known as the Spectra. In a minute, I will start telling you about it, but I just wanted to pre-warn anybody who's used to the normal photo chat vlog videos that I'm not going to do my normal narration at the nice microphone where I am right now. In the spirit of getting things done and getting this video out there, I've decided to go with the original soundtrack to me actually investigating the camera and talking you through trying some expired film in it. I shall warn you that um, there are lots of ums and ahs, as you just heard. Normally I'm quite open to tell you that I write a script and read it out all in one go. But I just wanted to get this out there today, try and be a little bit spontaneous with this one. And as I mentioned, there's quite a few ums and ahs, and it distorts a little bit, and it changes depending on where I'm positioned relating to the camera. I'm just going to leave those things in as much as I can, and we're going to go for it. So I hope you enjoy this video with me talking about the Polaroid Image System, or Spectra Camera, and the challenges of finding film that you can use in it, and when you do find it, if it's expired, what some of the issues can be with film that hasn't been shot for a long time. It's from the uh, late 1980s, early 1990s. I've got my uh, original Oxfam price sticker on there. You can probably see uh, £1.99 because I'm a true camera uh, bargain hunter. And um, the Polaroid image system Spectra camera popped up like that. It took bigger film than regular Polaroid cameras of the day. They took a picture that had a square format and the Polaroid image system was slightly rectangular. And the reason I am showing you this camera, let's have a quick look at some of the controls on there. It's a very nice camera, kind of um, professional uh, grade by Polaroid standards. Uh, got lots of controls. It's got a beep sound on there and a timer, autofocus, flash, and uh, a light and dark scale. I could never figure out on the Polaroid whether that meant it got darker or that meant it got less. That meant it got lighter or whatever. Polaroids were always so super expensive, it was difficult to tell as well. And I never had the, the uh, manual because I paid £1.99 for a chasm from it. Um, and a little thing to tell you um, what picture you were on, a remote control, which I don't have, and whether the flash was charging. Um, so it's a really nice unit. That's the button that took the pictures. When it was closed up, um, it was all uh, protected and, and you could put it in a bag, for example. Here is the sonar for the autofocus, the lens, uh, the viewfinder, and various other bits and bobs, and a nice big flash. Um, then this button here opens up the film compartment and it was in there that you put the Polaroid image system film. So I probably wouldn't have bothered getting this uh, camera out. Let me put it away. If I hadn't got some film, which I do have, as you might expect. Um, now, I already have, I have got some in a stash, um, which I haven't used for a while, but I bought this recently on a trip to the USA. You can see it was $10, and I expect that is because it expired over 20 years, 22 years ago. Uh, so it was used before October 2000. That means it was manufactured considerably for before. October 2000, and um, other film that was on the shelf, so the camera shop only had expired instant film, Polaroid stuff, uh, no 35mm or um, medium format film at all. Uh, it had a ton of stuff, but anything that I think was remotely usable, uh, that they could guarantee was usable, 
and not show extreme um, uh, degradation of expired film was it was much 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 more expensive than that eight to ten times more expensive and that wasn't something I was going to um, spend some money on but I I did think it was worth taking a punt on this uh, at ten dollars even with a really bad exchange rate in the uh, UK and I just been thinking about when was I going to do this and do this unboxing and testing and I think like well, the time is now. Now, there are two things to consider with expired Polaroid film. The first thing is that, well, actually, there's three things to consider. So with all expired film, when you, um, I'm just going to try and sit down here. It's rather cramped in the photo chat vlog studio today. Uh, when you, when a film goes out of date, the ability for the emulsion to render colours correctly starts to degrade. You can... Um, uh, what can you... what am I talking about? You can uh, try and prevent that from happening by storing it at a constant temperature, which is why some people put it in the fridge, because it's not that it has to be cold so much as your fridge is like at a constant temperature, it also has the, bit of the uh, side effect of being dark for the most time because you keep the door shut. This is why I don't freeze film. Some people think, oh, it's got to be the coldness that makes the difference, so I'm actually going to put it in the freezer. But to me, that always, to me, it feels like it has a risk of upsetting the chemistry. Now, on 35mm film where the film is dry, that's one thing, but with Polaroid, the second thing you have to worry about is the, what I'm going to call the desiccation, because... If you've never seen a Polaroid, this sort of picture here, um, it's probably out of focus because I'm not looking at the camera at the moment, uh, gives you a clue. The Polaroid's always got this bit at the bottom, which is where traditionally you'd write down something on the film to say what it was a picture of or something like that. But that's actually a pod um, where, in fact, I've got a picture taken on this very camera. I'm going to go and get it. Hang on. Here we go. Here's a little Polaroid lesson for you. So that very uh ooh, giving it away surprise that is a standard polaroid sx70 or 600 type picture it's a square format it has this section at the bottom compare it to a polaroid image system picture you can see that the image is a little bit shorter but it's wider it's got the traditional rectangular feel of um a standard 35 millimeter type photograph. Again, it also has this section here. Both of these were on expired film. That was um, Polaroid Impossible Project film. Um, that is taken on our um, just expired Polaroid film that's meant to go in that camera. And for if you're curious, that's my old uh, one of the old living rooms, I lived in a house in multiple living rooms um, that I used to live in a few years ago. Um, and you can see I'd written John O'Groats, uh, 8th of the September 2010 on that photograph. And that's that there. Just for comparison, here is an Instax Mini, Polar uh, Fuji Instax Mini for comparison in size in case you've never seen them. So anyway, this, this um, back to the Polaroid. This section here is actually a little pod where the chemistry for developing the pictures lives. So your chemicals are down there, you take the photo, um, then it goes and it comes out to pick the camera. And at that point, the rollers break this pod, they force it out and it goes and it squeezes it across the picture. And you have to worry with old film, I'll put that on the camera there, with old out of date film, so not only is the chemistry got to be accurate, because if it's not good, well, you can see this picture. Now, I don't mind that. It's faded, but there are no blacks in that image and there are no whites because the chemistry had gone off over time and its ability to render that correctly has um, disappeared. Now, I can tell you from my well, sort of personal photo albums and things like that, if you had fresh Polaroid film at the time, they were very good uh, 
you know, rendered colour very, very well, and they stay very, very well. This idea that old photographs fade. Polaroids, as long as you keep them in the photograph of them, don't. They're really, really good, lovely representations of what they took the photograph of. This is a really, really good example of out-of-date film rendering a vintage look, but it's kind of a con because if your Spectra camera was working, or image system camera was working correctly at the time, uh, it wouldn't have looked old like that. It's just that that um, the stuff in the in the picture and the uh, you know it just looks vintage and sepia like, um, but the white would be as white as the picture frame if it was um, correct. And just for uh, clarity, the wall in that room was off white, but the table legs were actually. Um, the table is still over there. It's Arctic white in this room. It's a different room. I live in a different house now. Uh, and these Billy bookcases from Ikea were also Arctic white. And you can see that they're not. Um, and like I say, there's no black. That picture frame was black. This is classic expired film, what expired film looks like. And like I say, you then have the extra thing of, has the chemistry dried out? Is it still viscous enough to spread evenly across the picture? So you have to worry about that. That all depends on how this film packet was stored. And I have no idea where the film packet was stored. It could have been, I doubt it. But it could have been on the back seat of a car for the last 22 years, getting hot and cold every day and the sunlight burning its way through the uh, packet down into sections like that. Or it could have been stored um, under reasonable conditions. But... That, nevertheless, is a chemical change that 22 years challenges. There's just nothing you can do about that. Um, it is going to change. It's not going to be the same as it was. And that's going to say 25 years ago, this, this film may well have had a three-year shelf life or something like that. And then finally, you will see, if you've never seen one of these cameras before, um, there's a tripod screw, which you also don't always get on all Polaroid cameras. No belt loops and things, there's no battery compartment because Polaroid films had the battery in the pack. And so with expired film, you've got three things that could go wrong. The, the, the um, emulsion could be um, out of date, the developing chemistry could be out of date, and the battery could be flat. And so we're going to check all those things right now. But the first challenge will be the battery. Because if the battery's flat, the camera won't work and we'll never find out if it um, uh, if it's going to work. You can see, perhaps, if I, re if I release this video in its unedited format, you can see why I write a script for photo chat block things. My ability to remember what I was going to say is not very good. Anyway, I'm going to open this film pack now for the first time since it was sealed up at the manufacturers. It's got a little section here where you're supposed to open it. Can you see that? So let's do that. Um, I should also point out, before I do, uh, it may well say, it doesn't say, but I know you should, protect it from x-rays. And when I flew back to the UK, I had this hand checked at the airport. Now I'm gonna make another video about that. <laughs> Because that was a task and a half, I can tell you, but I'm not complaining, but just saying in case it's very easy on forums, people will go, just reject, request a hand check. Well, that isn't easy for either you or the guy who's got to do it or the lady. Um, uh, but I'll talk about that in another video. So let's open the packet. And you'll see, you can see, it still rips open quite well after 22 years. Um, the film comes in these nicely sealed foil compartments. So the cardboard box is just plain cardboard and there's some words inside there. The film itself comes in a foil pack. Um, there's a little bit of, it's really screwing with the, the um, exposure. Take pictures between 13 degrees and 35 degrees. Um, and there are some hot and cold weather tips about like sticking the picture up your sleeve if it's really cold and things like that. I'm not going to worry too much about that, but this foil pack, rather like a packet of crisps or potato chips if you're in the USA uh, or North America, um, 
will prevent will, will do something to protect it from evaporation and changes in temperature and possibly cosmic radiation. I mean, that is another thing to think about over time. There are, believe it or not, particles coming off the sun that go into the atmosphere and pass be, be inside and out the other side of you and me as human beings that can actually land on photographic film and over time cause um, strange markings and things like that. So th this is meant to protect against all of that. And so let's get it out of this pack because the... Um, bloody uh, exposure thing is driving me mad. So it's got a sort of easy to tear little section here. Let me pull that apart. Here is our pack of Polaroid uh, Spectra film. Now this is the dark slide. Um, this protects underneath there the film from being exposed. I pushed it back a tiny bit then because I suspected it had moved over the years. You can sort of see, maybe you can see there the stack of pictures, there's a couple of pictures in there, and there's a little seal there, and there are the battery contacts. And what I'm going to do now is uh, pop that down there. And being a true nerd, bring out my very battered and covered in paint multimeter and just take a reading off the battery. I don't know um, which is plus or minus, it doesn't really matter. There will be some kind of reading or not if the battery has got any juice in it after, like I say, 25 years. So negative on, positive on. It's reading 6 volts, uh, 6.04 volts, which I think, and it's, it's, um, it was stable. So that is, Reason enough, I think, to uh, take a punt on this in loading into the camera. The, the battery's got to do quite a big job. I think it was probably should be more like 9 volts, and that might be critical. But the battery has got to operate the motor that ejects both this dark slide and then all the 10 shots from the camera. So every even just putting the thing is going to put a load on that battery that will deplete that voltage. But it's also got to work the sonar, um, or the sonar mechanism that's got to charge the flash and everything. So it could be that although it goes in and it pops the dark slide out, that adversely affects the voltage and it won't um, shoot the whole pack of film. And even if it does, we then have to check whether the emulsion is any good anyway. But here goes nothing. This is what you do. You just shove it in there. And I'm fairly certain from recollection, because it's been a while since I've done this, when you pop, I'll just shut the top part anyway. When you pop this closed, it should eject the dark slide if it's going to work. So let's go. Okay. Doesn't necessarily mean it's broke. This might be needed to be done. There we go. And it has tried and it hasn't done it. Um, and it's showing a little warning sign. It's saying it's pretty unhappy. So uh, let's try again. Okay, no joy there. Um, that to me sounds like the battery doesn't have enough juice. That's not the end of the world. Um, what did we get? How far did we get? There's no sign of anything coming out, just to be on the safe side, in case it makes a difference. I'm going to take this sticker off. I don't think I needed to, because it's actually the top part of everything that is the crucial part. But we'll pop all that back in. I'm looking at the camera more than I am the viewfinder. And see um, if that does anything now. So that's interesting. It's registered that it's taken a picture, but it hasn't ejected anything. So I'm going to try kind of resetting stuff. What do I need to do? I need to get that open. 
it hasn't ejected the dark slide. Maybe that me fiddling with that dark slide. <sighs> you can see why I edit these bloody videos normally. Me fiddling with that dark slide um, caused it to stay in there a bit too long. And also, <laughs> why you don't take that sticker off? Because you can't get the packet out so easily without it. Okay. This could be a big Clive type moment here where I go, one moment, please. Yeah, one moment, please. All right, I'm back. Um, so I've managed to get the camera, uh, the packet back out, and that will have reset the film counter. The dark slide is ready to move. Now, see that little notch there? There's a little sort of spring in the camera that goes, tries to push that forward. So perhaps if we put that in there, I'm just going to double check. Those rollers are moving okay, so I don't think there's much else that could go wrong, but it doesn't want to come out. Um, let's just double check the frog tongue. What call the frog tongue is it's happy because that's that's the frog tongue. Um, okay. It's unhappy. Um, let's try again. Uh, flop that out. You know what could have happened? You know what could have happened? What could have happened is that over time in this foil packet the pile of pictures so the, the, the actual individual pictures are these are obviously the correct incorrect ones but they're stacked up in the packet like that if this has leaked at all down here which it simply could have done through time atmospheric pressure changes in conditions um they could have stuck everything together, including that dark slide, although that was moving pretty freely in my hand. So I'm going to risk the first shot in the pack. Just going to scratch my leg there. Um, and fiddle about with that dark slide. Do I need to? There we go. And I do have to pause again and come back with a nice microphone, because at this point, the camera ran out of memory. And I lost a little bit of footage of me taking the film cartridge out and deciding that I was going to test the battery voltage again. So when the video picks up, I've turned the cartridge over, and I'm about to test the battery voltage. Oh, sorry about that. Um, camera ran out of space. So let's double check the voltage again. Oh, that's on the wrong setting. <laughs> the voltage has dropped. Um, Voltage has dropped to 5.7 volts, and my recollection is that should be 9 volts, and so it's really going to be struggling. Now we have a choice at this point, because there's another film pack in here. So I can use that film, it isn't written off completely yet, because I have another device that can use Polaroid film. So I think what I'm going to do is pop that back in its um, thing there and put it back in there for the time being. And in for a penny, in for a pound, try the next uh, packet that's in there. Although that's something going on in there. Let's just see what it's like in here. This could have a better voltage, but something else could have gone wrong with that. I don't like the sound of that sort of grainy sounding sound. Um, there is a distinct smell when I open this one, sort of photographic chemical smell. And there's some black powder. Uh, 
and a residue on my finger and there's a sign of something nasty going on. That battery, I can tell you now. Um, something went wrong in this film pack. Not to worry, let's check anyway with the uh, multimeter. I've got six volts. Now we know six volts didn't work originally. So is it worth contaminating the camera? Bearing in mind this is this is dusty. I think then that's the tab that I should have left stuck on. <laughs> I think I don't I don't want to move that. In fact, that dark slide does not want to move. Something's gone wrong in there. I can also feel that that is bulgy and crusty. So is that the end of the video? Well, no, because I bought two packs. So it's raining outside and um, I was going to go out anyway today. So you may as well open this one. Um, exactly the same thing going on. Um, best before 10th 2000. And it is now 2022, uh, October 2022, in fact, so exactly 22 years ago. Um, let's just open it and see what we've got. There's no point in keeping this on the shelf for a rainy day. It is a rainy day. So again, two packs of film. Let's try this. One. No. No. Um... Worrying sounds in there as shaky of, 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 of uh, spillage. But likely to be, because it's from the same batch, a similar reading on the battery. I mean, I really do think that is the case. Um, the dark slide is there's a little bit of resistance there. Let's check the voltage. Point zero one. Um, well, it's open now, so there is only one thing to do. Load it. Whoa! And test it. Okay, so we got it out. It came out. So there's a dark slide, a Polaroid dark slide. Um, there is little to say about this, really, except that this, again, should be perfectly white. I don't think the camera is going to render it, but in my eye line, eyesight here, there is some um, discoloration of this dark slide. Um, it's quite handy as material. It is sort of um, very, very light proof, so you can use it in like uh, pinhole camera projects and stuff like that. I'll hang on to that. It also is... It's just cardboard, apart from this plastic strip and this plastic strip here, it could be glued. Um, so let's take a picture with the Polaroid camera. Um, it may not have enough juice to take a picture, but um, let's see. Uh, I haven't got anything set up to take a picture with. But I'm just gonna move the camera. I'm not gonna move the camera, I'm gonna move the Polaroid camera. Um, out of right, out of shot, and it's going to take a picture of a cactus that is on my windowsill. Um, I should have, I should have thought about this in advance and tidied up. Um, cause this table looks great, but you should see the chaos everywhere else. Um, but let's just take a picture and see what happens. Um, here goes. Nothing at all. Uh, put the autofocus on. Don't even know if it's going to do it, but. What's it saying? Am I too close? Something is the matter. Not enough light, maybe. Okay. Right. It took the picture, it fired the flash, it can't eject it. That's that low battery problem. 
What are our options? We're in a position now. Um, let's sit down and think about this for a second. Here is the position. The, the camera... Um, the picture is jammed in the camera. And the dark slide has been ejected. So if I take the film pack out now, it will wreck that first picture. Um, I wasn't expecting complete failure. Perhaps I'm going to have to resign myself to it. There's a couple of options I have. I could try and reload the dark slide so I can get the picture out. Um, that's a bit of a faff, but it can be done. So that I can take the film back out. And consider um, trying the, the final pack. Um, I could take the, ca the packet of film out and you could see an unexposed Polaroid picture. But I don't really feel like doing that. So... Or I could just end the film thing here and say, beware, all you people out there who found a vintage Polaroid camera who think you can buy some vintage film and just shoot away. But I can't leave you hanging like that. So. Oh, I have screwed it. Okay. We're in an interesting position here. The... film has been exposed and it's been pushed out of the pack but it couldn't get through the frog tongue and the rollers. Uh, it says it's ready to take another picture. It's possible. Let's just do it. No, it's jammed. It's well and truly jammed. So and the camera's gone into kind of like standby mode. So I'm going to shut that. No, I'm not. I keep forgetting that. If I shut that, I don't get access to that button that opens that. You can see, as I do this, I open this. Can you see that white bit there? That is the, the bottom of the Polaroid picture, and light is flooding into the bottom section. So there is no way to... Um, what is there? Um, there's a cog there that should be coaxing it through the rollers. Um, if I do that, I want to push it backwards so that it doesn't come flying. I think, okay, that's a little bit better. I could yank it out now. Because these are ruling, these are moving okay. The Rollers are okay. 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 <laughs> Tell you what. I'm going to pull the picture out. It's going to spoil the picture. We can perhaps see though straight away what the problem is. So this is a Polaroid picture that has not been developed. And you can see this is funny shape on it. So the brown is the base of the image where the this photographic sensitive material is, the emulsion, if you like. And down here in this pod section, you can see where there's been some leakage. And I can feel, in fact, that this pod of chemistry is bone dry. Um, it Had it even got through the rollers, and I suspect the reason it couldn't go through the rollers was... the. the, the it had encountered resistance from this hard chemistry, is that, yeah, this is not got any moisture left in. There's no ability for it to spread it across the image. So whatever I took on there is, is gone now. The photons have blasted it into oblivion. oblivion. That is one dead and spoilt image. Um, the camera, let's see what the camera thinks when I shut it. It says it's ready to go. I think the rest of the pictures, I'm afraid, are going to be dead and and dry. And that that um, 
material, that sort of those particles you can see are what was floating around. I'm pointing over there. <laughs> We're floating around. Oh, thank you. I was thinking I accidentally jogged the thing. That was what was floating around in the um, in the dirty film packet where there was a residue. So um, let's just take it. Just gonna literally point it there and see what it does. Yeah, similar thing. Flash fires. It can't get through the rollers. Um, the film hasn't even been ejected this time. So what can I do? I'm going to try and shove the dark slide back in. Um, actually, I'm not. Sod it. Out it comes. It's a similar story. Um, the film has dried out and desiccated and everything, if I push the, uh, the film out, the one below it, the picture, this, if you know what an instant film feels like, that should be, um, it shouldn't be, I, I can feel dried, hard chemistry in there. Even on this, um, this little Fuji Instax image here, it doesn't feel like that. Um, so I'm going to say all the pictures in here, and let's just do them by hand, are exactly, tell the same story. Here we go. These two have come out stuck together. So they would have never worked. Um, it's the same. It's the same. Oh, it's a shame that one was glued down, but it's the same. Um, and etc. etc. And even really bad. This one is not coming out at all. You'll see in a minute how this. So, yeah, I can't even eject. I think this is the final image. Um, can't even get this this um, one out. I suspect it has come to some unhappiness. Um, in the pack. What's going on? I mean, I'm sorry, it's not very, not very good looking. Um, yeah, that is. There we go. That was very horribly stuck down. You can see. So, for whatever reason, there's been leakage. And corrosion. So there's this big spring, you see. That's what keeps the pile always with enough stuff for the little mechanism to poke the picture out. And underneath it is the battery, which tried its valiant best, but couldn't do anything. So there you have it, as it were. There you have some of the pitfalls of um, old Polaroid cameras. Um, an expired film and part of the reason for not for buying all this stuff because I did it in advance but for um, making this video um, today and, and, and hurrying it up was there's a, uh, there's a discussion going on on a Facebook photography group about um, Kodak's line of um, instant cameras which are from the early 1980s and Polaroid would, were unhappy with them bringing out a rival and they shut down the whole process and somebody had acquired one and, and I think they had suggested that they were going to try and find some vintage film and shoot with it and I wanted to demonstrate that even if you do find reasonably new film um, expired 000 I mean it's 22 years old it's not 40 years old which takes you to the early 1980s but just over time the film dies. Um, it has died because it has dried up, just like you and I. If we had no, if the moisture content in our bodies was was not replenished sufficiently over twenty two years, we would not survive. And this film has not survived. Now the story is kind of not over. I still have six volts of battery there. Uh, I have some interesting Polaroid packaging, which might make a postcard for somebody. 
and I might be able to use these uh, Polaroid shells, if you like, in some kind of artwork because I do like to paint and, and do various, um, express myself artistically. But for the time being, uh, that is the end of this photograph. Both my packs, or my, it is video, I apologise. You can see why I make the scripts and I read the scripts out. Um, that's the end of this, uh, plus the microphone is nicer that I use. I, I think the, the sound will be okay on this video. Um, yeah, that's the end of this video. Um, my two packs, my $20 worth of expo of old expired Polaroid film has come to a rather desiccated and dried up uh, conclusion. Um, I hope you found that useful if you've lasted this long and that um, it helps you decide if you've got a situation similar of an opportunity to buy a film or a camera or you're just generally interested in Polaroid um, photography and the process, you've got some insight into what um, can happen. Should just say I've got one unopened packet left, but because it came out the same box as this, I just have no hope that it is um, any different. Really, that box will have been stored in the same place as, as whatever caused that, and that could even have been in a, um, you know, in a fridge, in a photographic shop where it is left under perfect conditions, or it could have been, you know, on a shelf with the sun shining on it day in and day out. Um, I'm just going to write unchecked. Uh, to remind me that that is that. Uh, while I file that away somewhere. Um, hide the Sharpie I've been chewing the uh, clip off. But yeah, there you go. Um, I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you're new to the exceedingly not very um, kept up to date photo chat vlog channel, you might find something interesting in the other videos. I would appreciate it if you subscribed or at least checked out a few of the videos. And in the meantime, despite all of this tale of woe, keep taking photographs, keep playing with film, keep old cameras alive and keep cool. Goodbye.